Hi, hey Charles. So we are approaching your solo theatre piece, which is your final IB theatre assessment piece for Year 12 and for your IB journey. This is a HL only assessment piece and it is the final one that we'll complete this year. So the purpose of this video is to basically take you through what the expectations are of this assessment task. Um, and I will break down for you each component. I would advise that you take notes on what's expected of you and how you can achieve well towards your level six or level seven. So let's get started. So I'm gonna break the task down into four parts for you. The first two things you need to know is that the solo theater piece is obviously completed individually. It is an individual task and it's comprised of a 3000 word report that you submit to the IB as well as a four to eight minute performance. And the performance is actually graded, unlike in your previous tasks where your performance has not been graded and your tasks are more theoretical. The solo performance is part of the criteria and you will be graded on your performance as a whole. So for 3000 words, how is that broken? Uh, what do we break the 3000 words up into for your report? Firstly, and this is mainly criterion A, you'll need to research a theatre theorist and you need to identify one aspect of that theorist's theory, okay? So part A asks you to research and understand who the theorist is, what their theatre uh, theater theory is, and the context as well behind who the theorist is and where they've come from and what they've developed and contributed to theatre. So what's the context of this person's work? This will amount to around about give or take a thousand words of the report, okay? So the first part is very much about your research. The second part, and this is more criterion B, is how you develop a solo theatre piece. So in your rehearsals, you will be practically exploring ideas you brainstorm ideas and you will select one aspect, one convention, if you like, of this particular theorist's um, theory of work. And you will use that once you've researched it to develop performance material. So you will experiment with different ideas in class. And in this section, you need to reflect and you need to use feedback from your peers and also from your teacher um, and reflect on this in part B of your uh, solo theatre report. So again, part B will end up being around about a thousand words of your final report, okay? So really I'm breaking this down into four steps and this is really the four criterion of this particular assessment task. So part C then is performance. This is where you present your solo theatre piece to an audience. So as I mentioned, the solo theatre performance has to be between four to eight minutes. It cannot be under four minutes. It cannot be over eight minutes and you should use appropriate scenic and technical, so performance and production elements um, that are suitable to the particular aspect that you have showcased. So if you have chosen a theorist who does not use many props, much sound or lighting, then you need to be respectful of that because it's important that you display an understanding of this theorist's work and their vision and the particular conventional aspect that you're trying to showcase. So your evidence here, there's nothing to write for part C, but you will submit the four to eight minute video to the IB and they will mark this performance alongside your report. And then if we move along to part D, this is where you evaluate your overall performance, okay? So you will evaluate your performance that you've just given to the audience. And how you do that is, once you've finished your performance, you will get feedback from the audience. You can ask them questions as well. But in this section of your solo theatre report, Year 12, um, you will evaluate the theatre piece as a whole. So you'll use the feedback that you got from the audience. You'll reflect on some of the implications and the challenges that you met in this task. Um, and also how this task has really informed your learning in theatre as a whole. The IB really wants to hear about that last point, particularly because you're a HL student. This is a nice way to round off all of your learning in theatre from year 11 and year 12. So this will form the final thousand-ish words of your report. So if you can see you've got a thousand words in part A, roundabout about a thousand words in part B, and then about a thousand words in part C. Um, and that makes up your 3000 words for your report, okay? 
So part A asks you to choose a theatre theorist. So I have some images on the screen, as you can see, of different theorists. This is not exhaustive. There are many more theorists than what you see on the screen. But this is the first thing that you need to be able to do. So what is a theatre theorist? A theatre theorist is basically a theatre practitioner, okay? And it's someone who's contributed to shaping and developing theatre, either through their published work um, and their ideas, which we call primary sources. So, you know, with Brecht, Brecht has written plays himself, but also developed epic theatre. Um, and also there might be um, published works that are published by others about this particular theorist as well and about the ideas or the impact that they've had on theatre, okay? So what this signifies is that the theatre theorist's work has had some kind of impact beyond them just doing this particular practice themselves. It's impacted and influenced theatre as a whole and so that's why we call them a theorist, okay, or a practitioner. Um, quite often... A theorist or a practitioner will present um, maybe a different approach to theatre that hasn't been tried before, or they might have come up with or invented a particular technique um, or a particular mode or model of practice within theatre. So they'll often develop some kind of existing theatre practice or they might highlight something new about it or they could invent something that's completely different that hasn't been done before. And as you can see on the screen, here are some theorists that are very famous having done that in their lifetime okay some are quite ancient others are more modern as well so have a think now for a moment in year 11 and 12 which theater practitioners have you already studied which theorists do you already know of you may not have known any that were on the screen just then but who are some theorists that you already know of And so if you think of the two theorists that we've already had a look at in our IB theatre journey, we have done Bertolt Brecht. He is the theatre theorist or theatre theater practitioner. So we know that Brecht uh, wrote plays, many different plays, but he was also responsible for creating epic theatre, the style of epic theatre. Um, and epic theatre has contributed much to performance over the years. Um, and even in film as well, we see a lot of epic theatre conventions. We've also studied Konstantin Stanislavski's work. He is also a practitioner. He created the style of realism, as you know, when we did A Doll's House. Now, because you've already studied these two practitioners, you are not allowed to choose either of these theorists because we've already done each one in considerable depth. So it has to be a theorist that you are researching yourself, much like your EE. It's an area that you haven't explored in your class before. So in saying that, where can you find some information on theorists? Um, there is a link on Google Classroom that I have put up for uh, HL students, and I advise having a look at this link. Um, if you follow this hyperlink here, it has a link, it has a um, well, yes, a link to biographical information, um, primary sources that are available, like um, perhaps works that have been published by this particular practitioner. There's also some suggestions for related articles or perhaps um, videos that you can watch or short documentaries that you can watch as well um, pertaining to this theatre style that the practitioner has invented or pertaining to the practitioner themselves. Um, Digital Theatre Plus also has some fantastic information. So this link is available on Google Classroom, but also you have Digital Theatre Plus as well. Now, <clears throat> in saying that, I have some recommendations of my own, of my own having done uh, theatre for most of my life and also, also having taught theatre for quite a while. So here are some recommendations from me. And I've recommended these theorists not because I love them to death, that's one reason, but also because they work very well for a performance style that is a solo piece. What you'll find the challenge with the solo piece is that you can't do this as a group. So, for example, if you were going to do Brecht, Brecht really does require an ensemble in much of his work. Um, it's hard to alienate the audience if you're just a solo uh, performer. It can be done, but it's quite tricky. So you can see on the screen here, Augusto Boal, we did visit, revisit his work uh, briefly in year 10, but 
it doesn't count as part of your IB journey because it was really only a snippet. So Augusto Boal is fantastic. Uh, Jersey Grotowski, Robert Lepage, Dario Fo, and Antoine Artaud are fantastic practitioners. I, I do recommend um, having a look at these if you have nowhere, no idea where to start. Um, and you can ask me questions because I do have a background um, in working with some of these practitioners as well. Not all of them, but some of them. Okay, how can I use my theatre journal? Because the theatre journal, remember, is basically your evidence. If you were to get audited and the IB asked for more evidence of your learning, you should have your theatre journal and be updating it. So this should include information that you found when you were doing the research task, when you're doing your director's notebook, even from year 11. So you could use your theatre journal and you should use your theatre journal to document your research, number one. You can use the source log that I gave you for the research presentation. Um, when you're doing practical explorations, much like your director's notebook when you use a prompt book, you want to be jotting things down in your theatre journal, ideas, mind maps. Um, as you can see on the right-hand side here, this is a great theatre journal because um, they've got a picture of Brecht and you can see that they are brainstorming and that they've actually done some kind of research and thinking, okay? Reflections in the form of sticky notes are fantastic as well. Um, you should be documenting the process of creating, creating your solo performance. If you come to rehearsal one day and I give you feedback or um, a group member gives you feedback, someone in the class gives you feedback, write that down and do a reflection on it. Um, you should also document your directing and designing ideas. Again, I've mentioned feedback. Any actions that you think you'll take based on the feedback is also fantastic. These are things, guys, don't forget that you can add to your solo theatre report, especially for part B, okay? And as I've mentioned on the bottom here, you'll select, you'll adapt, and you'll present what you've recorded in your journal, um, and you can put it straight into your report, okay? So you can take what you think's relevant to the report, take it from your journal, and then write it in a more formal fashion for your solo report. Okay, let's move on. So structuring the report, how on earth do I structure 3,000 words? As I've mentioned, there are three sections to this essay, and within each of the three sections, there are two subsections. So you should use the title of the criteria um, for each section or as your subheading for within the essay. Um, I recommend following these guidelines that you see on the screen. I'm not going to read through every single one. You can pause this video and have a look. This is a suggestion. These are the elaborations that come straight from the IB solo um, criteria, okay? So have a quick read of these. I've put in brackets what my suggestion is for each section. So a thousand words for part A, part B can be broken into 500 words for B1, criterion B1, and then 500 words for criterion B2. And then you'll see that similarly for part D, which is after the performance, when you do your evaluation, 500 words on D1, 500 words on D2. And when I say A1 and A2 or D1 and D2, it means the bullet points that you'll see in the criteria. So for each criterion, there might be two bullet points. There usually is. And that's my suggestion on how to break up your solo research report. Okay, so have a read of that in your own time and use that as a guide. You can take a screenshot as well. So for the first part of your solo report, criterion A, this is where we talk about the theorist, the selected aspect or convention from the theory that you've chosen from this theorist and the overall context, okay? Now, it's good to have a mix, as you can see on this diagram here, of primary sources and secondary sources. And primary sources generally aren't too hard to find for most of these theorists. So when I talk about primary sources, I mean that you have found research that uses the theorist's own words, quotations from the theorist, um, documentaries where the theorist uh, does an interview perhaps, or speaks about their vision or speaks about their vision with a particular play that they've written, um, speaks about perhaps their vision for theatre as a whole. So anything that has come directly from the theorist's mouth, okay? 
When we talk about secondary sources on the right-hand side here, we're looking at what others have to say about the theorist and their work or their theories, okay? So if you have a look at this middle section in comparison to the left side of this Venn diagram, we've got theorist versus their theory. So this is what the theorist said. This is what others have to say about the theorist and their theory. And in the middle is where you give me some context as well. So some history about the theorist and a context of the theory itself as well. But what's important, um, HL students, is that you explain the significance. Why is what they've contributed significant to theatre as a whole? Okay, where would we be without them if, if they hadn't contributed this, contributed this to theatre? So when you're selecting the theorist, um, I've already mentioned some of these, but I'm just going to emphasize a couple of things. So you should have little or no pre previous experience of researching or um, practically engaging with these theorists. What that means is no Brecht and no uh, Stanislavski. It is important that the theater theorist that you choose has made a significant contribution to theater. I know there's some great modern practitioners, up and coming modern practitioners, but perhaps they've only been around since 2015 and it's probably too early to judge how significant um, their contribution has been to theatre, okay? Now, the last part is very important. You need to make sure that whatever you select from the theory, okay, that you can demonstrate it in performance. And I will explain that later and how that works for part B when we look at the criteria as a whole. I recommend having a look at this blog. It's a fantastic blog that tells you how to boss the solo theatre piece, okay? So you can read that in your own time. It's also on Google Classroom. Guys, what I want you to think about um, is that when you choose one aspect or one convention for your solo theatre piece, it's like pulling one piece of pizza, okay, out of the entire pizza as a whole. So you're taking off one slice, all right. Even though you're only taking one slice of pizza, you want to get the one with the most topping. So what I mean by that is that you might choose one aspect but it might have little bits and pieces from another aspect in there as well. It might overlap. And that's okay. What I would say is choose an aspect that you can also, when I say aspect, I'm saying convention, that you can showcase effectively in performance. So choose a piece of pizza with the most toppings. In other words, choose the one that you're going to be able to showcase the best performance style and the best performance skills in and the one that's going to allow you to have a significant impact on your audience, but also one that's going to showcase that you understand this theorist and you understand this convention really well. Okay. Okay. Last but not least, here's some comments from examiners on when you're selecting a practitioner. Interestingly, examiners have said to stay away from Stanislavski because if you're doing naturalism or realism, it's really, really, really hard to showcase that on film um, and to showcase perhaps, for example, invisible messages as we've done before. It's hard to showcase that on film. Luckily for you guys, you don't need to worry about this. Okay. Um, so method acting, anyone who uses method acting, so method acting means if I was going to play Ray Charles who um, is, who has a movie about him, for example, and who was a very famous singer and pianist uh, who happened to be blind, if I was going to play him as a character, Stanislavski would suggest, for example, and Chekhov, that I maybe glue my eyes shut for two weeks so I understand what it feels like to be blind. It's really, really, really hard to showcase all of the work that you did being blind for two weeks in a theatre um, assessment like this, okay? So you need to carefully focus on an aspect of the theory that we can actually practically explore in the classroom together, okay? As you'll notice in red here, examiners have said the most suitable works um, or the most suitable solo theatre piece reports those students chose theorists um, who allowed for the aspects that were appropriate for practical exploration. What that means is you want to choose a convention that you can explore, that you can play around with, that you can adjust, that you can actually get up and rehearse using this convention and see what it looks like, okay? So when there's something to do with movement or expression or technology um, or dance, for example, 
that works really well because you can practically explore it and film it perhaps and then reflect on it. So examiners have recommended any sort of theorist who's similar to Artois or Brecht or Grotowski, um, Bogart as well, very common choices. But also examiners like it when you choose someone who's a little bit um, outside of the box, like Robert Lepage, for example, okay? Bearing in mind, guys, you only have four to eight minutes to perform, so you want to be able to showcase a good convention within this time. That's part one of our video, and you can click on the next video where I will take you through the criteria for the solo theatre performance as a whole.